everybody, I'm Bethany. Welcome to the show. What do we like to do at this time of year? Gather around our table, eat lots of yummy food, tell stories, share recipes. I like to gather around the table with my kids and make Christmas cookies. Well, we're not making something to eat today, but we are making something just as sweet. This beautiful Santa Claus paper casting from vintage replicated cookie molds. Let me show you how. <laughs> To make our Santa Claus paper casting, we'll be using this cookie mold from House on the Hill. These cookie molds are hand cast from original vintage cookie molds, some of which date back to the 1600s. I like to work with my cookie mold on top of a terry cloth towel because we're working with water and paper pulp and this just helps to catch the drips. I also like to prepare my mold by spraying on some vegetable cooking spray just to help the paper casting release more easily from the mold. I like to blot off any excess as well. Now to make our paper pulp, we'll be using Arnold Grummer's bright white cotton linters. Just get a handful of those and place it in a blender along with about three cups of water. You can use your home blender for this. Just make sure you wash it before you make your morning smoothie. We'll also be adding in Arnold Grummer's paper additive, about a teaspoon's worth. The paper additive helps the paper casting to have a smooth texture and finish. Now make sure if you're working with your kids, sometimes they like to punch buttons on blenders, make sure you put your lid on. And blend on low for about three seconds. And then we're gonna blend on high for 45 seconds just to make a really smooth, consistent paper pulp. After you've blended, bring over a colander or strainer that's set over a bowl and you're ready to pour your mixture into it. And you can see the bowl catches the water and you can save that water if you're planning on making multiple paper castings because you can reuse it every time. Now I have this wonderful soggy paper pulp and this is exactly what we want it to look like. Now I'm going to be putting this onto my mold. I don't want to squeeze it into a ball because I don't want it to make a big lump of paper pulp. I want to pat it almost and make a pancake shape with my hand. I don't want to extract too much water either. I've found that the wetter the pulp, the better the detailing that you get out of the mold. And we're just going to keep making these little pancakes to completely cover our cookie mold. These cookie molds are very durable. They're hand cast from wood and resin composite. After you work with them, they're really easy to clean. Just use your hand scrubby and scrub them out and then let them air dry. Don't put them in your dishwasher. You can see that I'm completely covering my cookie mold, even the outside edges. And I'm just, you know, this paper pulp is fairly wet. That's why we like to work on a terry cloth towel. Now we're ready to take out that excess liquid. So just fold over your terry cloth towel and press out that water. And this part is really important. A dry paper casting is going to release from the cookie mold a lot more easily. So just keep patting this house on the hill they have these beautiful cookie molds I chose this one because it was very vintage looking and the scrapbook page I'm gonna put it on I have a vintage theme to that when you can't feel any more water seeping out and you've pressed the details you've pressed that pulp into the details of the mold that's really important then you're ready to pop out your paper casting bring over a flat surface. I like to use a cookie sheet or maybe a wire rack. You could use a plastic lid. Just make sure whatever you're popping it out onto, that's what it's going to stay on for it to dry. You don't want to carry around your paper casting when it's wet because they are very fragile. You can see that it's really packed tightly into that mold. I like to use a straight edge. This is just a letter opener. We're going to gently pry off the edges of the paper. And don't worry if, you know, for some reason your paper casting tears or it's not quite the detail that you wanted. This project is great because you can just crumble it back up and put it back in your blender and do it over again. There you can see our beautiful Santa with striped coat paper casting. Isn't that so pretty? Now we want to deckle the edges of this. And this is best done when the paper casting is still wet. Just take a little 
pair of tweezers and using your finger you can also use the edge of a dull knife and holding down that edge we're just going to gently pluck out pieces of paper pulp. This can um, accidentally tear out bigger chunks if you don't really anchor your paper casting. So go slowly and just pull gently. When you've gone all the way around, it's ready to dry. Drying time will vary based on how much pulp you put into your mold and also how large your mold is. If you touch it or if you put it to your cheek, if it's stiff enough and it still feels cool, then you have a few more hours to let it dry. Now let me clean up before I bring in my finished paper casting. We don't want to get it wet. Here is the dried Santa Claus paper casting. You can see that the edges are deckled and it's nice and stiff, although still a little fragile, so don't you know, accidentally try to bend it in half. It's not going to survive that. Now to adhere handmade paper onto cardstock, which is what I have right here, I use this ThermoWeb Super Tape. It's a super strong adhesive. Just cut a strip of it and it has this pink or kind of slightly red backing. You just peel slowly off like that. This adhesive is very, very strong and I love to use it with my paper castings. And just press down and it's ready to put on your scrapbook page. Let me show you the scrapbook page that I made. Here is my Santa Claus paper casting front and center. And remember at the beginning of the show when I told you I love to sit around the table with my friends and family. Well, I wanted to create this scrapbook page that celebrated my family through the years and the recipes that have been passed down from my grandmother. This is my great grandmother here and she made great pie crust. All of these family pictures, my Aunt Risa and my mother helped me gather up. And it was so interesting to see, you know, the clothes they're wearing and, oh, look at that table setting. You know, mom has that now. Or, things like that. If you're interested in how to create the tabs, the opening tabs on this scrapbook page, check out the Back to School webisode in the archive section and I'll teach you how. I loved making paper casting projects so much. We're going to be making a snowman card using a different mold, so let me set that up real fast. Here is the snowman mold that we're going to be using. It has this really nice circle shape and I'm going to be making some more of my paper mixture. So remember we can reuse the water when you reuse the water, you don't need to put in the paper additive every single time. I recommend doing it about every third time you make the mixture. And I also have a little bit of paper pulp left over. That's just easy to put back in that mixture, along with another handful. And this time, for the snowman, I have these Arnold Grummers opal sprinkles that I'm going to be putting in with the blender. This has a beautiful sheen to it. The paper casting really turns out nice and sparkly like snow. So I'm going to pour that into the blender. Now we're ready to pour it into our colander strainer once again. I'm going to do this on top of the towel just because I don't want to spill any. And I can already see the sprinkles in this very sparkly. Now I'm going to make my pancake pieces of paper pulp once again. Remember the wetter the better. Now I'm not going to show you how to remove the excess water again. You've seen that. I just want to show you my finished card. Here is my finished snowman card. I inked it a little bit uh, with some color dusting just to showcase the detailing of the paper casting. And if you can see, it does have a lot of sparkle to it, especially here in person. I adhered this onto some handmade paper that I thought complemented one another, and I adhered it on top of a little piece of ribbon. I stitched in some pattern paper in the middle, added a little stamped sentiment, and also put another inked paper casting on the back. This is ready to put on my mantle or give as a Christmas card to somebody else. Now let's take a look at some of the other beautiful projects that these cookie molds can make. This Santa Claus right here is just like the one I just made. This one just happens to be painted with acrylic paints. It turned out beautifully. Here is another ornament that I made using the paper castings and acrylic paints. I just stitched two paper castings together along with some papers on the inside and have a little hanger and there's a handy little ornament. Here's a beautiful box with a paper casting it adhered onto the top. And of course, what do cookie molds make the best? 
beautiful cookies. And this one right here is just like the snowman card I just made. You know, crafting makes me really pretty hungry. Oh, does anybody have any tea? For step-by-step -step instructions on how to create this week's project, download the design guide featuring special make-it-your-own bonus tips.